Did you know that fake graphics cards were originally not used for scams? That's right, fake graphics cards were originally made with good intentions, as weird as that sounds. Not people trying to make a buck off a less technical parent or grandparent. These fake cards cousins are even still around today in the form of some of the most popular enthusiast computer mods. In this video, we take a look and analyze the shocking history and one of the most complex stories of computer hardware to date on this channel. But to best explain this story, we need to take a look at it from the beginning. Now, before you get boarded out, I just want to take 15 seconds to acknowledge generic scams because they're important for describing the foundation of the problems we have today. The first and most primitive and boring graphics card scams were exactly what you expect. Someone misrepresenting a graphics card as, as, well, something else. If that be online, in a store, there were no elaborate methods to disguise a card as something else, at least in the BIOS or a fake cooler. That's also why the current graphics card scams we have today date back to the very beginning of graphics cards themselves. So that's why it's, I guess, boring. This whole little section is boring. So it can be applied to anything, and so let's move on to the interesting stuff. In order to make the fake graphics cards we have today, it would take a set of environmental factors to create such complex scams. The first of these would be the widespread adoption and usage of, of course, the actual graphics card. Early graphics cards like the GeForce 256 were limited in their production and their adoption, and therefore people who had the cards uh, were far and scarce in between, and people were not even interested in buying them. So, the available knowledge about how these cards worked and any potential mods, modifications, software mods, soft mods, etc. were limited to due to their usage. With the rise of the internet and more specifically online forums, information began to spread on how these cards worked. By the time of the GTX 400 series, enough of these cards were in circulation that a substantial enough library of information existed. This included detailed breakdowns on how the BIOS was stored and accessed in the cards and how the card represented itself to the computer and how the card itself utilized its drivers. With this information, security vulnerabilities were discovered and leads us into our next integral topic, modding. Now the first thing I want to say is there is absolutely nothing wrong with modding in its purest form, but the rise of modding itself had some serious nasty side effects. The first mods that came to light were soft mods. Taking advantage of discovered security vulnerabilities, soft mods were modifications to the drivers or the BIOS in an attempt to unlock more performance. In some cases, unlocking more processor cores and gaining a substantial performance boost. I made a video about this, so check it out. These soft mods started out as driver modifications. And in some cases, Linux users were just trying to get the newest graphics card to work with Linux. The present manifestation of this being seen in the default Novio graphics driver, and I apologize, I probably slotted the pronunciation of that. No one knows how to say it. These Linux users developed custom graphics drivers, did a lot of reverse engineering to understand how these cards worked. Then, with that knowledge, was of course posted to the internet. And now, of course, Nvidia provides its own official driver release, and the Novio development can now basically learn from NVIDIA and also support a whole wide range of other graphics cards. The other side of the story though is driver modification which occurred on both machines but primarily on Windows at first due to lack of support for Linux in the beginning, at least referring to NVIDIA cards. Users began to reverse engineer the drivers in hopes of finding ways to unlock hidden features or squeeze more performance out of the card, and with the surgeons of knowledge about how the drivers worked, users began finding ways to spoof the card as fun or to show their friends, like, hey, I have a NVIDIA GTX 4000. Um, and they also began to see how the drivers access the card and how to even modify or ignore parts of the VRAM. And this is very important when we get to today because with current graphics cards, the drivers that come with them are specifically designed to display larger amounts of VRAM and actually take usage of less. So with these skills, modified drivers could be developed to communicate with the card's BIOS, allowing for some increased performance and maybe even a little overclocking. The big target, however, was the BIOS itself, because by understanding it, you had a lot more of control over overclocking and how it performed in games or in other tasks altogether. Keep in mind this was before we had MSI Afterburner or the wide public availability of overclocking tools. 
It was partly because of the desire to overclock that so much knowledge was unearthed about these cards, and perhaps a cause to why we have the present day graphics card scams and why they even exist. With these first overclocks came custom BIOSes and tools that allowed users to modify the BIOSes to meet their desired overclocks. Now this is not like MSI Afterburner, this was stuff that you would download your BIOS file, you'd install the script, and you would basically the script would modify the BIOS and then you'd have to flash it back on the machine. Very interesting stuff. So it was the early precursor, I guess, to MSI Afterburner where MSI, the Afterburner itself, kind of handles that with the card. These custom BIOSes are of course still used today and you know some cards even offer two BIOSes. You have a little switch that toggles in between them and this encourages users to experiment without worry about breaking their card. With both the BIOS and drivers having a wide pool of public knowledge, it was time. Now that graphics card scammers had all of their infinity stones, the software tools they needed, and of course all the different pieces of information, a few graphics card scams started to appear online. Now these were one-offs, custom cards usually with an extremely high profit margin and individually modded. These custom cards were not popular or really that successful in terms of scamming people. And if you scam one person, you would have to find another card and then remodify it, make custom drivers or you know flash the BIOS, etc. If you wanted to repeat the scam. And the process is often long and painful to update the BIOS individually on older low-end cards. You have to get a special tool and clip into it, and then you have to, it's a long process there. Plus, you would likely have to remake your eBay store in order to sell the product again. Nobody would want to buy a cheap, we'll just say, I know this is off in the time period, but a modern day 2080 Ti for $40 from a store with no ratings on eBay. This resulted in scams being rather far and few in between and pretty obvious to spot as well. The next major leap in the production of scam graphics cards would come in the form of a few factories in China. The current individual, locally based scammers would be replaced by a select few in China with resources to mass produce graphics cards. A large sum of unused GPUs began to accumulate from other manufacturing. Since most graphics cards are manufactured in China, the extras just kind of sat around. And this is the same for the silicon that really never found its way into a PCB or old cards, as I said, that never got sold. The factories began to modify these card BIOSes and drivers in mass and you can actually find large stocks of super cheap old graphics cards that fit the criteria to buy in bulk online. And once these cards were modified, they usually were still, of course, clearly identifiable as the original card and had no changes besides software. So they still looked like the Radeon 5870. I don't, I don't know my numbers in the Radeon side that well. Um, but for GTX 460 or something, they still looked like the card it was supposed to be and kind of obvious to spot there as well. So these modifications were published to the internet by people with good intentions. They wanted to kind of show and ask questions and say, hey, how does this work? How does the BIOS break down, etc." And they, of course, were trying to investigate the problem. But in my personal opinion, this has been a rather bad choice because it has allowed anybody to download and start their own scam operation much quicker with less technical knowledge. And this is the first kind of scam graphics card that exists today. So after a few years, a new type of scam graphics card began to show up on the internet. A card that had a completely custom PCB and completely designed from the ground up to scam buyers. How do I know that? Well, I actually personally purchased a scam graphics card of a couple actually, and to discover that at least one of them had a completely custom PCB and the PCB itself was within a year old and then the GPU was from 2010. So the card was recently manufactured and was designed with a custom, it was crappy, but it was a custom cooler. The entire card was unique and designed to be misleading. Not only was the PCB custom in order to save money, but the shroud itself was designed to be as cheap as possible. There are also a few shrouds that are more easily identifiable as a scam graphics card. The shrouds that contain a polygon shape, and usually there's variations in color of this, um, and then there's the ones that I've got that are basically metal boxy designs that are, you know, fake metal. Um, and these usually both actually come with custom PCB cards that are specifically designed to scam people. For cards where just the software was modified, the cooler remained the same. As per low-end cards, usually there is only one fan and this is how you can easily identify the type. Uh, or at least a low-end card, so you know if you get in a one-fan 
car, you're not buying a 2080 Ti. So next we move on to the changes to the PCB or Type 2 cards. So first, we got a green version of that polygon shroud that I mentioned earlier. This was modified to be different colors. You had, I've seen red, green, blue. Um, and then of course we have that metal fake design. They still have the custom PCB, but the Type 2 cards have of course two fans. And they are not really doing anything as the low-end GPUs they cool do not have a high TDP, plus the metal uh, milled aluminum heatsink really doesn't do a good job of making contact with the GPU or dispersing heat. So there's no heat pipe, so it's really not doing much. Real quick, I also want to talk about the different GPUs themselves used. The card itself, as I mentioned, is custom, but the actual silicon die is a real NVIDIA product. To make a custom die would be even more difficult and expensive in research and development to produce. Using the leftover stock purchased as super cheap prices on, I guess, discount is much easier. And my purchases usually show that it is low end from at least a GTX 400 to about 700 series cards. The newest GPU was a 750 Ti and the oldest one being a 450 of the cards at least I purchased. Recently, there's been a shift from the 450 to the 550 and newer. So I, the first car I got was a 450 and I've seen the next, I guess purchasing the same card again, got the 550. So signaling that the stock may are starting to be running out, at least in the cheap old GPUs. Never are there any GPUs above the absolute minimum. And now what do I mean by that? You're never gonna find a GTX 480 in for sale. These always are the lowest end cards of the generation. And that means when you get scammed, you won't get anything close to what you actually paid for or anything that's even kind of semi-interesting. Now having a bunch of fake cards is a difficult prospect. How would you sell them? eBay has a strict policy of going after scammers. I mean, obviously you get some USB drives or some fake terabyte USB drives, but still you have a really good review system that's pretty upfront. People know what they're buying. People know the rating of the store, etc. Um, but trying to sell there would result in lots of accounts being banned and no ratings would pretty much leave off any potential victims slash customers. And Amazon has a pretty sophisticated review system and after looking and researching on Amazon, yeah, there's some scam graphics cards, but it's one star and everyone that didn't buy it has pretty much reviewed and said it's a scam. Newegg has these scams, but cleans them off regularly. And so that is where the rise of a little website called Wish. Now, no doubt it's super easy to find a scam graphics card on that website. Not only find one, but easily be fooled into purchasing a fake card. Now let's go over some of the factors on why that's the case. Well, Wish, was just the environment they needed in order to gain traction for the operation. So, so Wish has a very easy account creation process and almost all the tech products have very, very few reviews. It's hard to go through and know what's a valid product or what's a real product when nothing has reviews. The difference between buying a real graphics card and a fake one on Wish is pretty slim, hard to tell, at least if you were to look at it from specs, etc. That is why some of these scams had hundreds of purchases at the time of my first scam video. These cards cost about $30 to make, but were being sold at upwards of $60 or more. The profit the scammers were making was enough to encourage them to continue. I also want to point out it's not just Wish. All of the cheap, oh boy, all of the cheap bulk purchase sites like Joom or AliExpress have these issues too, and these sites give these scammers a platform. Now, what are these scams advertised being? I mean, what are the cards they're trying to claim to be? Well, it looks like for the last couple years, these fake GPUs and not CPUs, I have CPUs on the script, uh, claim to be a low end current generation. There were some fake GTX 960s and I guess 950s on Wish for a period back when that was the most popular newest current generation. But today I even found the GTX 2050 Ti. Now, obviously you don't know, you know that that doesn't exist. There is no 2050 there. You know, we don't put the GTX on a 20 series card and most of the scams today are 1050 TIs and 1060s. There are no 1650s or 1660s just yet, but I won't be surprised if we see that over the next year or so. The majority of these scams, as I said, are 1050 TIs. And so I purchased over the last year, a 1080 TI, 1050 TI and a 1060 TI 
which also doesn't exist. And it did have eight gigabytes of, or claimed to have eight gigabytes of memory. So like this video if you want to see me go buy that 2050 Ti, by the way. Just give this video a like. I don't know. If we get 200 likes, we'll go through and do that. There are no 1650s, 1660s yet. The majority of the scams on Wish are 1050s. So I purchased a 1080 Ti, a 1050 Ti, and a 1060 Ti, which also doesn't exist over the last year. And I want to address something about that 1060 Ti. Not only did the 1060 Ti claim to have 8 gigabytes of memory, be a Ti version of the 1060, it actually ended up frying the computer I put it into, literally, like something was wrong with the card, raising up some questions about the potential quality issues and the potential physical damage that is caused by these scams. Now that perhaps can be attributed to the fact that the card was shipped in a literal plastic bag, and not only did the bag look like it went through World War III, the card was in even worse shape. The shipping was the cheapest I've ever seen, and I honestly feel bad for the scam graphics card. At the time of my first scam graphics card video, Wish had a full stock of scam graphics cards of all shapes and sizes. They have since done a better job of removing anything above a 1050 Ti after some you know, relatively large YouTube coverage. Sadly, that put pressure on the scammers to find new ways to sell their products. This leads to other sites having stores pop up with these fake cards. Sites like Amazon, Newegg, and other large e-commerce sites. And these cards all have the same format, same look, same style, pretty identifiable. So with the coverage on YouTube, many sites began to crack down on the problem. And I mean, for Amazon, they've always done a good job. Newegg, or they've always done a good job cleaning them off. The result of the added pressure was for these scammers to heavily increase the price of these fake cards. They went from, in my, from at least what I saw, from being $40 for the 1080 Ti that I bought, all the way up to $60 to get a 1050 Ti. With more time spent to create these fake storefronts, the prices had to be higher to continue to keep that same amount of profit. I would like to think that due to the higher prices, less people were being scammed, yet on which hundreds and hundreds of people still continue to be scammed by buying these cards, and perhaps the current stuff going on in the world is actually preventing more of these cards from being produced. Meaning, get this, that there is a scarcity of fake graphics cards. I mean, hey, just look at the positives. So what is in the future for these scam graphics cards going forward? Well, as long as some sites continue to offer a place for these scams with little to no moderation of the products sold, scammers will continue to have a financial incentive to sell these cards. Going forward, I would not be surprised to see 1650s or 1660s um, or some less technical scammers claim to sell a 1050 Ti or 1050 like we've already seen. So most of the cards that I have purchased ended up coming from overseas and it's hard to go after these scammers in places like the United States with no legal incentive for them to change. I don't expect that to happen anytime soon either. With the current beer virus, we might as well see something positive come out of this. While almost every tech supply chain is stuttering, the scam graphics cards may be hit the hardest. The shrouds that we commonly see, or the cards at least, are appearing to run short and thin represented by the large price hikes across all of scam graphics cards. Going forward, expect to see some new cards, still cheap, but advertising to be the next generation. So do I think there is a next leap in scam graphics cards? Well, I made a video a while back on making a fake 2080 Ti. This was just kind of a shot in the dark, and I wanted to see, kind of get in the mind of a scammer. I didn't sell it or anything. I did call my friend up though and ask him if he'd be interested in buying it. But I used a 3D printer to make something that would fool the average person, which it did. It fooled my friend. So I think a cheap plastic shroud could be added into the future to step up these scams a little bit farther, or at least represent one in the actual picture. I actually expect this to happen, though Border Customs stops any of these super obvious fakes, and the reason why we have the current cheap unrecognizable shrouds is, of course, to get around this. So while we may see some cosmetic changes and we may see better software modifications to spoof the cards, that means we might actually get stuff that doesn't crash, I don't think there is much left to innovate in going forward. So that concludes our wonderful episode here about the really interesting history of scam graphics cards. Give this video a like if you enjoyed and check out the other history on history of Intel and core adding software and then this. And as always, please have a wonderful day. Stay safe, everybody, and stay away from the beer virus. Have a great day.